about five years ago, I remember a guy walking in asking for an application and asked me for my number. Every day since then, showed up with roses, Starbucks, and a plate lunch every day. And now we're five years later and we're together still and getting engaged and hopefully getting married soon. Don't have a date yet, but hopefully soon. About three years ago, you know, I watched her and she could hardly walk, most of the time sleeping, all day sleeping. I was watching it get worse and I felt hopeless. And then we finally met a doctor who would change our lives. Immediately when she walked into my office, I knew she was sick. She was yellow. Uh, her skin had a lot of scratch marks on it. Uh, I could hear her breathing down the hall and her liver function tests were off the charts. So it was just a matter of time that she would go into liver failure. The other facility felt that she was too high risk and basically said, you know, just um, live out the remaining days of your life and this is the best that we can do. Well, we felt differently. We felt that we could give her a chance, uh, knowing that the risk is too high only if she's willing to collaborate with us, work with us, and, um, and believe in us. And I think that's, that's the, the key mark here. If it wasn't for Dr. Le being so convincing, he works really hard and you can tell the care that he has for his patients and that confidence that he has is what made me want to stay and believe that maybe there is a chance because I couldn't find no other doctor that would take a chance on me. And he had such high confidence. He told me, don't worry if anybody, if we find another doctor, we'll keep going until we do find somebody. My motto since high school has been, we must either find a way or make one. And that is exactly what we had to do in this case. The decision we faced was that this condition that she had would have been fatal if it wasn't treated. And so we were faced with the reality of, well, she needs it. We have the expertise, we have the people who can do it. Just because it hasn't happened here like this before doesn't mean we can't bring that together uh, and make that happen here. A few days before surgery, uh, Charlene had uh, doubts of uh, whether she wanted to go through with this. Uh, she was just exhausted, she was just tired of waiting for the right moment, um, and she just wanted to leave, just pack up and leave. And uh, we brought her fiance in and trying to help her understand that if she leaves the hospital, she's gonna die. There was no question about it. Like, I didn't want her to give up on me because uh, I wouldn't give up on her. So I told her to fight for me, like I would fight for you. Respiratory therapy, pharmacy, the intensive care physicians, myself and Dr. Ver, as well as our colleagues from nursing who had experience with these medications, all of these people had to come together and work in symphony to safely see her through. My colleagues uh, um, uh, share with me that uh, she probably would only have like five or less than 10% of, of making through the surgery. Despite those low numbers, uh, we felt as a team that we could come through for her. She woke up. Uh, she thought that she didn't do the surgery yet. And I told her that it was done already. All the surgeries are done. And she's got to recover and get better and get out of here. What impressed me about this particular case was people really gave it their all. They threw their whole selves into really going the extra mile, digging deep, and you really appreciated the extra effort that they put in to make absolutely sure that they had everything that they needed. Now three months out, I'm feeling a uh, hundred times better than I was. Nothing can get me down anymore because I was given another chance. And if it wasn't for Polly Momi and their team, Dr. Lee, Dr. Ver, everybody, I wouldn't be here anymore. I would have lost that chance. So I'm forever grateful and I just look at life like that every day.